Welcome to Echoes in the Gallery. I am your host, Susan L. Sistrunk. As a lifelong artist and educator, I am proud to bring you my first original podcast, set in a series of volumes. Each episode will air weekly on Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Tonight, in Episode 6, The Truth, we will unearth a startling revelation. Let us step into the gallery and begin. In the car across the street, Jonathan covered his mouth as Gwen screamed out in pain. His heart burst with sadness. What had he done to her? We have to go in there and get her. I have to help her. She could need medical attention. Jonathan felt his panic building. No. We wait until they pull out and are heading back. They are taking her home. Storming in right now makes not a damn bit of sense. Luckily, we know what they are driving. They sat for five minutes in stoic silence, Jonathan burying his face in his hands with tears rolling down his cheeks. Finally, a large black Escalade rolled out of the parking garage and turned onto the street. Taturia waited until about a half a mile separated the two vehicles and slowly turned her black Ford Mustang into traffic. They followed without speaking, and by the time they arrived at Gwen's apartment block, Jonathan thought he would throw up. The Escalade stopped and the driver came around. He helped Gwen out of the passenger side after retrieving the painting from the back of the vehicle. She was holding a towel around her arm, and Jonathan could only presume the dark stain on the cloth was blood. His fear turned to anger at her being hurt. When we get out, grab the first aid kit from the back. She may need stitches, Turia instructed. Wait, do you know how to do that? Jonathan asked incredulously. I know how to do lots of things. They waited a few minutes until the SUV was completely out of sight. Jonathan grabbed the first aid kit, Taturia grabbed a 38 Special from underneath the seat, and the two of them hurried across the street. Gwen! Gwen! Open the door! Stop shouting, you moron, Taturia whispered vehemently. Do you want to call even more attention to the situation? You have no idea if Ivanov has other people watching her apartment. He quickly realized she was correct and felt stupid for forgetting he had a key to her place in his pocket. Right about the time he made it to the top of the stairs with that realization, the door opened. Gwen's eye on the right side was swollen shut. Her face was bruised on both sides, yet the right was significantly more so due to the punch Ivanov had landed. Oh my God, Gwen exclaimed. Get in here. Ivanov's men may be looking for you. Jonathan and Taturia ushered into Gwen's apartment. The two women looked at one another for a moment. Okay, who is she? Gwen asked, gesturing to Taturia. She's here to help us. Her name is Taturia. Let me see your arm. Taturia pointed at the blood-soaked towel. Gwen unwrapped the towel and Jonathan's breath caught at the sight of the deep, curved gash on her forearm. Those bastards, he growled. Blood immediately welled up as she released the pressure. Tutoria got to work. Open the first aid kit, Jonathan. You can assist me. Working carefully and methodically, the two of them worked together to stitch up Gwen's arm. Afterwards, Jonathan went to the kitchen, got three glasses and a bottle of brandy. The trio sat in silence for a few moments while the alcohol did its job to calm their nerves. Okay. Who are you? Why are you here? Gwen said to Tutoria. My name is Jennifer Taturia. My brother Sergei and I have been following and investigating Ivanov for some time now. He has defrauded a lot of people with his art schemes. We and several other people we know are victims. Through my research, I learned the two of you had business dealings with him. Jonathan filled me in about the forgeries. I know you provided them to Ivanov. Jonathan, how could you? We are in enough trouble. We don't even know this woman. What if she runs to the police? Jonathan looked in her eyes. I needed help to find you. Her brother had the ability to bug the room you were in so that we could find out what he knows. Fast thinking about the painting, by the way. But how are you going to pull this off? That is an impossible thing. When he finds out you lied, we will be dead. 
all you did was buy us some time. There is no way to make that happen, and you know it. Jonathan felt his temper rising. This was hopeless. Well, pardon me for wanting to save my own ass, Gwen shouted. She had reached her limit with Jonathan. I have done everything to save that stupid gallery, and it has never been enough for you. If we get caught, we go to prison for years, and I will get the brunt of it because I forged the damn art. You never think about how this affects me or my life, and I am sick of it, Jonathan. And by the way, I have a damned plan. Hopefully it will work now that you let the cat out of the bag to a random stranger. She collapsed back on the recliner. Her arm was throbbing. Tutoria listened and watched the scene in silence. It was obvious that these two still cared deeply for each other. Otherwise, she would not have done so much for him. She had some questions, but held back. Jonathan knelt before Gwen. He took her hands in his. I am so sorry. I never meant for this to go as far as it did. It was reckless of me, and when we get out of this, I am going to fix this for us. We can get rid of the gallery and have a normal life for a change. Please don't give up on us. We can change things. Hot tears rolled down Gwen's cheeks, and the blood from her arm dripped onto her blouse. It's no use, Jonathan. When this is over, we will never be the same. And I have to start planning how to create the illusion of an art theft. We don't have much time. Tutoria leaned forward, glass in hand, her eyebrow raised. What do you mean, illusion of an art theft? I heard you say you were going to switch out the painting for the original in a couple of days. You said you were waiting for this couple to go out of town. Yeah, well, that really isn't the truth. The truth is, no one has the original by Romanov Servona. Wait, Teturia held up her hand. How could you make such a deal on a painting you have not even located? Ivanov will kill you both. You don't understand. It's much worse than that. Gwen set her glass down on the table. No one knows where the painting is because it doesn't exist. And neither does the artist. I made him up. This concludes the sixth episode of Volume 1, Echoes in the Gallery. Please join me, your host, Susan L. Sistrunk, next week for Episode 7, The Process, where we will discover much about how Gwen and Jonathan have created their fiction. Until then, stay safe and love each other.